Welcome everybody, especially to all the youth and young adult viewers out there. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of the solemnity of St. Joseph, the patron of the Universal Church. So some of you all might know that Pope Francis has declared this year as the year of St. Joseph. Now, what's so important about St. Joseph, especially in this year? Because this year marks the 150th anniversary that the church has declared St. Joseph as patron of the universal church. That's the entire Catholic church around the world. So why is St. Joseph important to us as Catholics? Well, it's because he was Jesus' foster father. And Jesus, being a son, would want to model after his father, after his dad, and set him as an example. So if we want a glimpse into Jesus' earthly life and how he was like, who better to look at than St. Joseph, his father, who he wanted to model after? Pope Francis says in his letter, after Mary, the mother of God, there is no other saint mentioned more frequently than Joseph, her spouse. Pope Francis says in his letter, Patris Corde, after Mary, the mother of God, no saint is mentioned more frequently than Joseph. So today we'll get the opportunity to learn from St. Joseph and how he lived his faith and how he serves as an excellent role model for us. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that because this year is so special and the church wants to promote the devotion to St. Joseph, the church is granting plenary indulgences to the faithful who fulfill certain criteria, which we will discuss at the very end of the video and do together. An indulgence is God through the church pardoning us from all of our sins and even the punishment attached to those sins. And this indulgence you can gain for yourself or you can gain for someone who has already passed away. So make sure you stick around to the very end of the video to do this. To have faith means to believe in the presence of God and aiming to love Him even when it's hard to overcome our struggles. Faith pushes us forward when things seem to hold us back. St. Joseph, man of faith, pray for me to always be aware of God's presence and trust in his care for me. St. Joseph was a laborer, a worker. To labor is to share in God's work, in reaching out to the poor and needy, and work for the salvation of souls. St. Joseph, teach me to work as you did, with patience and perseverance, for God and for those whom God has given me to support, whether through my prayers or my service. St. Joseph lived a life of chastity. To live a life of chastity is to treat your body, as well as others, as sacred because we reflect the image of God. It is having Jesus in the center of all your relationships.
A man and a woman should reserve for marriage the expressions of affection that belong to married love. Saint Joseph, patron of workers, model of faith, and example of chastity, pray for us. Through you, may I come closer to Jesus and Mary. Amen. I would like to introduce our special guest speaker, Bishop Thomas Ten Thai Nguyen. Bishop Thomas is originally from Vietnam, and he was born into a family of eight boys and three girls. He and his family came to the U.S. in 1980, and he is originally from the Diocese of Saint Augustine in Florida. Bishop Thomas was ordained bishop in 2017, and became the auxiliary bishop of the Diocese of Orange. We are very honored to have Bishop Thomas join us today to share with us his knowledge and wisdom on St. Joseph. I am grateful to Sister Grace Duke, the Mother Superior of Lovers of Holy Cross in Los Angeles, for inviting me to do this reflection to get connected with you young people. And I want you to know that I'm honored to be with you. Before I share with you my reflection on St. Joseph, allow me to give you my brief remark about my relationship with St. Joseph. I had belonged to St. Joseph congregation in Vietnam from 1966 to 1979, 13 years with that religious community by the name St. Joseph. One of the parishes I served in Jacksonville a St. Joseph Parish, and I served there as a pastor for almost four years. My coat of arm has a flower of lily symbolizing St. Joseph, and my bishop's staff has the image of St. Joseph. Recently, one of the Vietnamese parishioners from St. Nicholas Parish donated a statue of St. Joseph and places him at the front of my suite, and I love it because every time I come and go, I greet him and I ask, ask him to help me, to lead me to his son Jesus. Now, I have an opportunity to share with you about my reflection about St. Joseph. Ho -ho. I hope that uh, you are happy with me as I'm happy with you. So let us begin with the Gospel reading. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. At that point, the Spirit sent him out toward the desert. He stayed in the wasteland forty days, put to the test there by Satan. He was with the wild beasts and angels waited on him. After John's arrest, Jesus appeared in Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. This is a time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe in the gospel, the word of the Lord. You and I are in the season of Lent, and the gospel that you and I have just heard was read on the first Sunday of Lent. It is the story of Jesus entering into the desert. Why the desert? Because the desert is such a basic, unforgiving place. You are as close to the edge of life and death as you could possibly be. No access, no luxury, no distraction, no TV set, no microwaves, no car, no cell phone, no YouTube, no Facebook, nothing except an utter silence. Yes, silence is what we experience in the desert. And so when the church has the month and the Feast of St. Joseph during the season of Lent. It is because the Church wants us to look to St. Joseph and learn from him the value of silence in our spiritual life. Indeed, St. Joseph is a silent man in the Bible. St. Joseph does not speak one word in the Scripture. No word. And yet he spoke powerfully through his action. And what did he do? St. Joseph did as the angel of the Lord had commanded, not once, but three times. Joseph responds with action. He responds, tell us that he was a man of faith. 
And that is my first part to share with you, St. Joseph, a man of faith. Joseph was silent, but this silence does not mean that Joseph was not disturbed by Mary's surprise pregnancy. Indeed, it took the visit of an angel in his dream to console him. Now, Pope Benedict XVI remarks, To trust God does not mean to see everything clearly according to our criteria. It does not mean to carry out what we have planned. To trust God means to empty ourselves, to deny ourselves. Because one, only one who accepts losing himself for God can be just as St. Joseph, that is, can conform his own will to God's and thus be fulfilled. St. Joseph showed his strong faith in God in his way of responding to the angel commands. And three times, like I said earlier, first, God called him to take Mary as his wife, because it is by the Holy Spirit that Mary has conceived the child. No question, no how, no when, just did it. Second time, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, because God, Herod is searching for the child to destroy him. No question, no how, no when, just did it. Then the third time, get up, take the child and his mother, and set out for the land of Israel. Those who had intended to destroy the child are dead. Again, no question, no how, no when, just did it. And St. Joseph's action tells us that he put his total faith in God and did what the angel told him. And you know what? With this strong faith, he was able to see the Holy Spirit working miraculously in Mary's life. With this strong faith, he was able to see God working wonderfully in the sharing of the three king and the shepherd when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But more importantly, he was able to see in the baby born Jesus in Bethlehem, not an ordinary baby, but a savior, a God of Emmanuel, a God with us, the Son of God. In other words, he looked beyond what he saw and fathomed the mystery of God's love. God so loved the world that he sent his son. And as you know, this baby Jesus grew up and preached the good news of God's love. Jesus practiced that love by way of reaching out to the poor and fed them, reaching out to sinners and forgave them, reaching out to the lonely and accompany them. And this love reached its climax on Calvary. No greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. So young people learn from St. Joseph's faith to trust that in Jesus we come to believe that our God is a God of love. Yes, God loves us. God loves you, no matter where you come from and what you are doing. It doesn't make any difference whether girls or boys or rich or poor or pretty or ugly, or handicapped or no handicap, blue eyes, black eyes, red eyes, cross eyes, no matter. God loves you just the way you are. Why? Because God created you in his own image and God sees himself in you. No wonder Isaiah proclaimed in his book, You are precious in my eyes and I love you. And the powerful proof that God loves you is the crucifixion. And who is hung on the cross? Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross for your salvation. God loves you that much. And the second thing that you need to learn from St. Joseph's faith, and that is to see the presence of God in the ordinary things in our everyday life. And for that, I'd like to share with you the story of Edward Skillerback, a famous theologian. You know, when he joined the Dominicans early on, they had to get up at two o'clock in the morning, like the monks, and they would go to the choir and chant the office. Young man that he was, 
just having entered the seminary, this lovely monastic rising in the hours to sing God's praises, quite capture his imagination and thus apart from the noise and busyness of the world and he fell so close to God. So in his enthusiasm he wrote to his father, how wonderful it feels to be praising God when all the world around me is asleep and I and my fellow seminarian are giving glory to God. And you know what? His father wrote back. And he was glad that his young son appreciated his new monastic life. But he should remember that when he was an infant, he's one of the 13 children. His parents too were up at 2 a.m. And yes, they too were giving glory to God, although they weren't quite singing the psalm. And you know, 2 a.m. bottle of milk. We tend to go with the Dominican, not with the Father. Get thee to the monastery and you will find God. But his father said, no, it is in everydayness of life that we uncover God even if we do not realize it at the time. Let me share with you a short poem. Now in this poem, God is talking. I am the great son, but you don't see me. I am your husband but you turn away. I am the captive, but you do not free me. I am the captain, you will not obey. I am the truth, but you will not believe me. I am the city, but you will not stay. I am your wife, your child, but you will leave me. I am the God to whom you will not pray. I am your counsel, but you do not hear me. I am your lover, you will betray. I am the victor, but you do not cheer me. I am the holy dove, whom you will slay. I am your life, but if you will not name me, seal up your soul with tears and never blame me. The point is to discover God in the ordinary things in our life. Learn from Saint Joseph to experience God in the nature to encounter God in the sacrament we celebrate and to see God's image in the people whom we meet every day, especially the poor and the needy. And from that experience, we will grow in our faith in the God who loves us so much that He sent His Son to die on the cross for us. So whoever believes in Him may not die, but may have eternal life. Now, second part that I'd like to share with you is St. Joseph, a patron of worker. St. Joseph was a man of silence, and yet he spoke powerfully in his action as a worker. And that is why the church has an annual feast, St. Joseph the Worker, on May 1st. Now, St. Joseph is a patron of worker because he recognized gifts God has given him. And out of gratitude to God, he shared those gifts for the service of Christ, for the service of Holy Family, and for the service of the needs of local community. Following Joseph's example, you and I are called to put our gifts in the service of others. You young people, you are gifted. Why do I say that? Because God created you in His own image, and God created you with gifts. So don't tell me that you don't have gifts. Everyone has gifts. It doesn't make any difference whether handicapped or no handicapped. Everyone has gift of time. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, right? And everyone is able to love and to be loved, right? I am sure you have more gift than that. Intelligence, social skill, athletic skill, pretty, handsome, those are God's gift given to you. So you must be grateful to God for those gifts, like St. Joseph. And out of your gratitude to God, you share those gifts to others. And gifts need to be shared. Let me give you, give you an example. I have a special gift of priesthood. Let me ask you, 
do you allow me to use that gift to say Mass privately in my bedroom? Well, I don't see you, but I'm sure that some of you shaking your heads, Bishop, you should say Mass publicly. I agree with you. Besides, saying Mass by myself is weird. The law is with you and nobody respond. Boring. You get my point. You too need to share your gifts for the service of others. To join youth group. To get involved in the parish life. All the service. Eucharistic ministry. Lectures. I'm sure your pastor will have some job for you. And of course, you can use your gift to reach out to the poor and needy in your midst. You know, when I remember when I was in Jacksonville, my youth group get together on the monthly basis, on the first Saturday, to go to abortion clinic, to pray the rosary, to pray for the conversion of those who plan for abortion and those who serve abortion. Also, every year, they get together in a nursing home around Advan before Christmas to visit the elderly and to sing Christmas carols. And you know what? The senior citizens were so happy about that. Oh, you can do that, right? Just some example. And I'm sure you young people are very creative and thinking many ways to use your gift for the service of others. St. Joseph labor was a mirror of God's labor. Because if you read in the book of Genesis, what do you hear? You hear the story of creation, right? On the first day, God walks. On the second day, God walks, creating heaven and earth. On the third day, God walks. On the fourth day, and the fifth day, and the sixth day, God walks to create Adam and Eve. And so from Genesis to Revelation, God constantly walks throughout human history. And right now he is working to create this world a better place. You and I are created in that image of working God. You and I are called to share our gifts to co-create with God to make this world a better place. A place of hospitality, a place of joy, and a place of love. Saint Joseph is a good example for that. Not
like a polite I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me Now the third part that I share with you, St. Joseph, a role model for chastity. If you participate the benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, I have to explain to you this. The kind of special adoration that you see the monstrance placed on the altar and in the middle of monstrance there's the lunette and there's the sacred host Jesus in there. You know what I mean, I hope. And so, if you participate in the benediction of that, that uh, blessed sacrament, you will recite the divine praises after the priest or the deacon bless you with the mantra. And the divine praises goes like this. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. And then you go through the whole litany until the end. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Saint Joseph lived with our Blessed Mother, but did not have sexual relationship with her. That's why the Church called Mary, our Blessed Virgin Mother. St. Joseph was able to live chaste life because with his strong faith, we talked about that earlier, he was able to know God's will for him. And St. Joseph was able to know God's will when he received God's call to take Mary as his wife. And he understood this call requiring him to live chaste life. That's why we have the divine praises. Blessed be St. Joseph, a most chaste vow. Now, in saying that, the Church wants to teach that St. Joseph a role model for chastity. Chastity is special topics for teens, right? Well, actually, chastity is a topic for everyone, for me, for the sister, uh, for your parents. We live in an age of sexual revolution. The secular society has a great impact in the sex life of people, especially to you, teenagers. The media and advertisement exploit you, young people, with pornography, movies, billboards, and really confuse you how to live chaste life. Many churches organize with youth ministry to address this topic. I remember reading True Love Waits campaign, and I'm amazed to read the text of the chastity flesh taken by teen, and the chastity pledge goes like this. Believe that true love's weight. I make a commitment to God, myself, my family, those I date, my future mate, and my future children to be sexually pure until the day I enter a covenant marriage relationship. Adam Allen, 
<coughs> set the campaign up with an opportunity for public redemption to teens portrayed in the media and by some government official as having out of control libidos. Quote, kids are taught that they are just animals and they are going to have sex, just use condom. Allen said, I am willing to stand by God. Wonderful. Stand by God. According to our Catholic tradition, we have sang Maria Goretti stood by God. Eleven years old, girl, stood by God because an older man, boy, about 16 years old, forced her to have sex with him. But Maria Gorley stood by God and keep her body pure. And so because of that, he w she was stabbed to death. She stood by God, not by Him. Stand by God, young people, with us as Catholic means to do God's will, as St. Joseph showed us in his life. And what is God's will for you regarding your chaste life? For that, I'd like to share with you a brief explanation of the theology of body taught by St. Pope John Paul II. God created Adam and Eve in his image and likeness. He made man and woman differently, emotionally as well as physically. He made us complementary. Men's and women bodies fit together. And that physical complementary points to a deeper fit. Many of women's natural strength correspond with men's natural weakness and vice versa. We are made to come together on every level. And the Genesis author said, listen to this, the man and his wife were naked and not ashamed. What the heck does that mean? Did they just have really great bodies? Naked can mean a lot of different things. When you are naked, you are innocent, transparent, nothing is hidden. For Adam and Eve, this was not just a physical nakedness. They loved each other with an absolutely pure love. They saw in each other the image and likeness of God. They wanted only what was absolutely best for each other. And so they had no hidden agenda, nothing that they needed to hide from each other. And theirs was a relationship of absolute honesty. It was also obvious of physical nakedness. Notice again, the man and his wife were naked and not ashamed. They were married. Adam's life was a complete and total gift to Eve. Eve's life was a total and complete gift to Adam. They lived not for themselves but for each other. And they did not just say, my life is a complete gift to you. They made that gift real by the gift of their bodies. In giving their body to each other, in the most real way possible, they gave themselves to each other. Saint Pope John Paul II said that sex speak the language of self donation. Why do we reserve sex for marriage? Quite simply, because sex has a meaning. It's a kind of ultimate body language. It say, I give myself to you sacramentally to love you and to look out for what is best for you and to be at your side for forevermore. And that is the language God built into it. So when we try somehow to change that language, to do it differently, we only distort the act and leave it completely meaningless. And to just believe that speaking the language of sexual activity outside of marriage is devaluing it, demeaning it. In doing so, we put each other at serious physical, emotional, spiritual risk, not loving act. Again, sex is for marriage. So, sex is a gift from God. 
You heard in the last voice saying to the patron and worker that we are called to share God's given gift for the sake of God's glory, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of God's will for us. St. Joseph is a good example for that. So teen, young people, keep your body pure. Sex is for marriage. That is God's will for you. Look to St. Joseph for role model. Come to St. Joseph asking for intercession. Learn from him the virtue of silence, prayer, so to know God's will for you, especially in your relationship with one another. Now the last part, the fourth part, St. Joseph, the patron of Universal Church. When Pope Francis announced the year of St. Joseph, the people wonder why Pope Francis go to Joseph this year. Many reasons. First, his personal relationship with St. Joseph. He was installed as Pope Francis on March 19, 2013, today, right? Today, feast, feast of St. Joseph, husband of Mary. He is known to have a strong devotion to St. Joseph. For more than 40 years, praying the prayer of St. Joseph. He told the oblates of St. Joseph that Joseph has never let him down. But the key factor for Pope Francis to go to Joseph this year is because this year Mark. 150 years anniversary of Pope Pius IX declaring St. Joseph the patron of Universal Church on December 8, 1870. The life of the church that time was threatened by many reasons. The Enlightenment had denied the very idea of divine revelation. Italian Revolution forced Pius the night into exile from 1848 to 1850. The church lost papal state, lost papal power. In other words, the church was in a very, very difficult situation. And with his strong devotion to St. Joseph, Pope Pius IX went to Joseph and declared on December 8, 1870, St. Joseph, the patron of Universal Church, to do what? To protect the church, as St. Joseph protected the Holy Family. In the same way, the church is, in our time is under attack with strong secularism, relativism, individualism, clergy sexual scandal, and so on. Last January 2020, I had the privilege to join the Bishop of California of the Region 11 to go to Rome for ad limina. 35 of us, we had an opportunity to talk and meet the Pope. And Pope Francis greeted us. In the meeting, Pope had no agenda. Bishop could ask whatever you want, open discussion. So one of the bishops asked, Holy Father, what is the most you are afraid of? Pope Francis answered, Division. Division among bishops. Division among clergy. Division among religious. Division among the lady. Unity is from God. Pope Francis see the church is under attack and so go to St. Joseph this year to ask for his protection as he did protect the Holy Family of all. So, my dear young people, this year we go to St. Joseph at the Pope's invitation. We go to St. Joseph not only to learn from him, man of faith, patron of workers, role model for chastity, but also to ask St. Joseph to intercede for us, to protect us, to protect our family, to protect our parish family, to protect our Catholic Church family, as they did protect the Holy Family. May you have a good year of St. Joseph.
in this year dedicated to St. Joseph. May he be our role model of faith, a companion in our labor, and an example of chastity in our life. Now together, we will pray the prayers to receive the plenary indulgence. Join me now to pray one Our Father and one Hail Mary to receive the plenary indulgence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us also pray for Pope's intention. Let us pray that we may experience the sacrament of reconciliation with renewed death to taste the infinite mercy of God. Finally, let us pray the St. Joseph prayer. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our afflictions and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patroness also. Through that charity, we bow you to the Immaculate Virgin, Mother of God, and to the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus. We humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ had purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be kind to us and from heaven, assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield to each one of us by your constant protection, so that, supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to go to confession, go to Mass, and receive Holy Communion. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.